there we go. Okay, fabulous. So today we're talking about iridology equipment. And um, so the, the question we're answering is if you don't have an iridology camera, can you still learn iridology or be an iridologist? And so the short answer is yes. The short answer absolutely is yes, but I want you to stay with me. I shouldn't say but. And I want you to stay with me as we look at this more deeply and examine various types of equipment setups, their pros and their cons, and where you'll likely want to end up if you are serious about being a professional iridologist. But first, just so you know where I'm coming from with all of this, uh, my name is Judith Cobb. You probably already knew that. My, I am a holistic health practitioner, and I've been in the industry for four decades. I have studied iridology under eight different instructors and three different styles. It's amazing how much you learn from different people. And I haven't necessarily believed everything I was taught, filtered through it, threw away what wasn't working, kept what was. I am also a, an IPA certified comprehensive iridologist and an IPA certified comprehensive iridology instructor. I got into holistic healing over four decades ago because I had some health concerns that the medical world wasn't answering. I was a young adult and I was getting frustrated because they were not helping me. I lucked into being interested in nutrition and that branched into herbology. And before I knew it, I was taking care of myself. And that was the start of my adventure in becoming certified and trained and really becoming a holistic practitioner. Over the years, I've written several books that I've self-published and self-distributed. Pregnancy Naturally, The Herbal Birth Kit Handbook, Healthy Kids Naturally, The Essential Guide to Nature Sunshine Products, Biokinesiology and Color Therapies Level 1 and 2, and Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology Textbook, which is currently available to my students as a digital download. I've also created and taught many courses. Herbology Level 1 was a 20-hour uh, course designed to teach the basics of herbal use in the home. We focused on things that were commercially available. Herbology level two had to happen when my students who finished level one said more, more, more. So we created 16 hours of advanced herbal training for in-home use. And the interesting thing is so many of my students who did level one and level two actually moved forward, forward from there and became uh, herbal health coaches, which was very interesting. Also created and taught biokinesiology and color therapy level one and level two. For a number of years, I was a certified antenatal educator with the ICEA. So I designed and taught prenatal classes. I have also designed and taught the dynamic iridology assessment system, which is an IPA approved iridology course. This is, it takes in all of the curriculum of what IPA calls level one and level two. I don't like splitting it into two chunks. I prefer doing it as one continuous course. So I'm going to invite you to stay with me to the end of today's workshop to learn more about the dynamic iridology assessment system course that will be starting up in September. In addition, I am the proud member of the Canadian Association of Holistic Nutrition Professionals the Canadian Association of Natural Nutrition Practitioners and the Alberta Herbalists Association. Now there are two things that I feel very strongly about from my many years in the industry. I've been in this industry as a holistic health coach for over four decades now. And um, between that experience and the many decades that I've been teaching various things in holistic health, there are some things I feel super strongly about. And if you've hung out with me for any length of time, you know these. Raven, good to see you here. Thanks for joining us in the, on the Facebook group. Those two things are, you'll be a better iridologist if you have a good anatomy and physiology course under your belt before you start learning iridology. Iridology is not about learning one marking means one thing. Iridology is about understanding what the interplay of markings means, and you can only understand that if you understand how the body works. 
The second thing uh, that we need to know is that iridology is not a stand alone modality. It does not stand alone well. I always compare this to having your car need to go into the auto mechanic for some work. You take it to your favorite garage, the mechanic looks at it and goes, yep, I know what's wrong, but I can't fix it. You have to go down the road because they know how to fix things. And so learning how to do an iris assessment is of no value if you don't have a modality. You need to have herbology or nutrition or homeopathy or something so that when you are working to do an assessment and you understand what what the eyes are telling you, what the client is telling you, how that meshes together, then you have something to actually recommend to your client. I've had people uh, come to me and I'm, I'm happy to mentor people, you know, give them 30 minutes of free information, free advice about business if, um, if they've got some training under their belt already. And I've had a lot of people come to me who've done iridology courses that did not have anatomy, did not have a modality, and they're wondering, how do I start a business? And my answer is you don't. You simply don't. You don't have a broad enough base. Being able to tell people what you see in their eyes is not useful if you cannot tell them what to, how to work with that. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, I want to see uh, makes sense in the comments box. Now, I, I am pretty militant. And for those of you who are um, on my email list or you're in my Facebook group or places like that, you will see me and people will ask, um, they'll ask to join the group or things like that. And Anila says, makes sense. Thank you, Anila. And I will tell them that my group is for people who've got at least an anatomy course under their belt, if not anatomy and modality. Right. That is who I cater to. I cater to holistic professionals who have that background because I want to take them to the next level in their business. OK, so that's enough of my soapbox. My apologies if that got a little bit too, uh, too, too political for you. And Raven says it makes sense, too. So that's great. Thank you so much, Raven. I really appreciate that. I just need to make sure I can see my Facebook group all the way. There we go. OK, so. Um, there you have it. That's if you're interested in learning with me, you got to have the prerequisite of at least anatomy and physiology. All right, let's look at some iridology equipment now, because uh, when you're starting out, you likely don't have three to five thousand dollars sitting in your bank account just waiting to buy equipment. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? I know I didn't when I started this business decades ago. But the equipment that I bought back then still serves me well in for various reasons. And I actually still have these things. I keep them on my desk in this little cute pouch that my girlfriend brought me from Ecuador. And um, this is where my students start. This is where I want all my students to start. This is, um, it's useful. It's portable, right? We can take this with us anywhere. As a matter of fact, uh, we often have little mini um, I print up little mini iridology maps for my students and send that out at some point in the course so that they can actually put that in their little pouch and they can do an iris assessment on the fly. What we really need to begin doing, to begin learning iridology, and even in those early stages of practicing is we need a good pen light, one that has really white light. We need, and this pen light that I've showed you here and that I've held up for you is actually the one I started with in the, like in 1979, okay? It's still functional. I can replace the bulb, I can replace the batteries. I love that it's an aluminum case, love it. Okay, um, a good magnifying device. Now, I don't even know if you can get these anymore. This is made by the Agfa company. It's an 8X, for those of you who are, there we go, it's an 8X jeweler's loop. Absolutely brilliant. I love using this as well. Beautiful, 8X is a lovely power. And a lighted magnifying glass. Now I like this one because it has interchangeable different powered lenses. Everything from I think a 2X to this 10X. And it has the little lights in it that you can see in there. So why do we need these? Why do we need these three pieces of equipment? Um, well, you can actually do without the loop if 
if you've got a lighted magnifier and a pen light. We really want to be able to have the magnification, right? To get it as close as we need to, to see what we need to. I like having various powers, particularly for my beginners. Hello, Natalie, good to see you. She's one of my students. Uh, good to see you. Uh, we we want to have like a 2X. We start with a 2X, get used to seeing what's in the eye, where's the eye, how do I focus this thing? Then we bump it up to the next power, which I think on this one is a three and a half or a five. And then we practice with that. And how are we doing with that? Are we able to focus? Can we hold this where we need to? And once we've got that mastered, then we can go up to an eight or a 10. You don't want anything stronger than a 10 because then you get lost in the eye, right? So something like that. Now these all, these, these kinds of things are all available at Amazon, not my favorite place to shop. Uh, I know I'm probably a strange duck in that way, but you can usually find these also at places like your local camera shop or a stamp collector shop or a coin collecting shop. Craft and hobby stores may also have these. And so, you know, in this time where small local businesses are struggling, I really encourage you to support your small local businesses as much as you can. Now, why do we need a separate pen light? Our magnifying glass has a light in it. Why do I need a separate one? I'm gonna show you how this changes things, but let me describe it first. When I'm looking at somebody's eyes and I've got that light on, I cannot change where that light hits the eye in relation to where I'm focused with my lens. That limits what I can see. We want to be able to move light around to literally cast shadows in the eye. So I will look at the light at the eye like this for a quick peek, get my bearings on things. And then if there's other things that I need to see, I'm gonna bring this light in from the side and I'm gonna move it around to see different details. So for those of you who are with me on Instagram, we've got our magnifying light, our glass, it does have a light. We'll focus that where it needs to focus. And like I explained earlier, change the powers of the lenses if we need to. But because the, these lights are in a fixed position, I don't have control over where they're hitting the eye in relation to my center of focus. If I want to move the light around, I want my pen light. I want to be able to move this around so that I can change how the light is hitting the eye. That allows me to see different details in the eye and it's so, so important. So I really suggest that my students have a basic setup like this, these three pieces, purchase them locally. Here in Canada, they would cost about $75, which is not a huge outlay for someone who wants to do this professionally. All right, so that's the first thing that we wanna talk about. You can start, you should start here. In fact, I tell my students, if I catch you buying a camera before you finish our coursework together, I know where you live. I will find you. Why do I say that? Because sadly, I have had students who were so excited, bless them for that. They purchased their camera set up partway through the course, and then by the time they got to a few months after the course, their life had totally changed direction. They ended up um, in a situation uh, where they were not going to be practicing as holistic practitioners and now they're trying to sell their equipment. It's used equipment, which means they can't even get half of what they paid for it. Even though it was loved and babied and I would vouch for it, um, it's just so important that you wait until you finish your coursework and that you know you love iridology, that you're integrating it into your practice, it's working for you. And then what I suggest to my students is put a little jar on the corner of your desk every time you do an iris assessment using your handheld equipment, take $10 or $20 from doing that assessment, stash it in the jar, save up the money, you can even start doing that when you're a student, save up the money. And when you are truly ready to buy equipment, you've probably got enough money saved up that you don't even have to put it, go into debt for it. That sounds like a good plan. I really like not going into debt. That's one of my favorite themes. All right. So you've got the basic equipment. You can do things in office, but what if you actually want to take pictures? 
Here are some images that one of my clients sent me that they had taken with their smartphones. I am going to tell you that you can get usable images with a smartphone. They will never be as good as what you will get with a, a proper setup. But you know, there's a time and a place for this, right? The world isn't perfect. And especially right now, the world isn't perfect. We all have stresses. You know, you might be under lockdown and not able to see people face to face, but you've got clients who want to come to you. I have a lot of clients who don't live close enough to come to me um, all over North America, all over the world. And I can, if I teach them how to take photos with their smartphone, and if they will be patient enough to take the right kinds of photos, we can get usable images. Now, I want you to remember a few things about your smartphone. Number one, your lens on your smartphone is not designed for close-up photography. Taking a close-up photography of a rounded surface is really difficult. And technically on a good camera, it requires a macro lens to do that. We don't have a macro lens built into our smartphones. Maybe you do, I don't. I've got a Samsung Galaxy S10 that is only just, um, it's like less than a year old and it does not have a macro built in. So that means that we can't keep this whole surface perfectly in focus, but we can do a decent job. Most of our smartphones average a 12 to 16 megapixel, which is okay. But for actual iris photography now, we're shooting 24 plus megapixels. You can see here that one of the other challenges with a smartphone is that we have all of these different artifacts of things from in the room, whether it's a reflection of something, you know, their eyelashes or something else in the room, or, um, you know, sometimes we see reflections of what's out the window, you actually see the window and a tree and a house in there. It's really kind of interesting. And it's just simply reflection because we couldn't block out enough of the extraneous stuff. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to do that very quickly today. However, with these photos, these are pretty decent photos. We can at least see our basic color. We're not going to use these for an absolute color assessment because every camera and every computer displays color differently. So we can't use this for an accurate color assessment. We can use it for a broad color assessment. We can see in this image on the left, we can see good fiber structure. We can see where we've got other things in the eye as well, bits of pigment. The image on the right is not quite as well focused. We can see most things and I would ask this client to potentially try for um, some more images of this eye to, to give us more clarity. Right, so that would be important to really uh, work on that. Um, if you want to either take photos with your own smartphone, or if you want to teach your clients how to do this, first off, I'm going to say, if you want to teach your clients how to do this, go to my YouTube channel, Judith Cobb. I think it's Judith Cobb Cobblestone. I should know my YouTube address, shouldn't I? I don't. Just search for Judith Cobb. And search through the videos, and you will see videos that teach how to do iris photos with a helper and how to do them on your own. Initially, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that there are no windows in the room, if at all possible, that'll help to cut out extraneous reflections. You want to have a small table between you and your client. You want to set your camera up, your phone, so that it is set for a 4X magnification. And then what you want to do, and it's hard to see in this image, this is a, a screenshot of one of my videos. This is my camera actually right here. You can't really see it against the painting that's in the back. Hello, Jonathan. John Jensen, good to see you. This is me taking a picture of my husband's eye, right? I have my camera on a tripod and I am, I've made sure that we have uh, all the, the light, all the, uh, the, blinds in the room are closed so we don't have reflections coming in from there and I'm just getting my focus set my camera on a 4x magnification and pop the images okay so not too hard to do uh, you might need a pen light 
to bring in from the side, to bring in from different angles, to uh, get rid of room lighting interference, for instance, or you might need to reposition the person in different, sitting different angles in the, in the room to get rid of room light interference as well. But it is doable. Will these be perfect? No, no, we're not gonna pretend they will be, but they will be usable. And that's what we need. We just need usable, right? All right. The next thing that um, that some people use is an iroscope. Now, you're going to find a lot of these on various websites on the internet. Prices range from a few hundred dollars to nearly a thousand. The resolution on these typically runs from two megapixels to 12 megapixels. The most common is about five megapixels. They yield fairly decent results, but there's one challenge they have fixed lighting. You are not able to turn any of these off. You cannot change where they land. So it gives a very flat image, which means you're going to miss out on seeing various details. So I don't typically recommend iroscopes that have fixed lighting where you cannot turn things on and off because it will mess things up. You know, a few years back, I had an iridology student who had, um, learned some iridology in her naturopathy course. She already had a camera and she always took all her photos with all of her, all of her flashes on. And she couldn't understand why none of her clients ever had what we call contraction furrows. So in the scope of my course, we talk about photography and how to use your equipment if you've got it and what to look for if you're going to be buying equipment. And she, um, sent me an email. She said, no one ever taught me I could turn lights on and off and change the lighting configuration. She said, now that I'm doing that, all of my clients have contraction furrows because the lighting changes how we see things, right? So really important to not purchase something that has fixed lighting because it's not going to allow you to see all the details that are in there. All right. Um, and so I wouldn't recommend buying an iroscope, even if it was only $100, because if it, if it only had fixed lighting, because it's going to limit things. I also like to have the ability in my professional equipment to add light or, or dim the light down based on my shutter speed and things like that, because I don't want to wash eyes out. And most iroscopes you, it's all set and you cannot change how bright or how, how dim. So it's just an important thing to watch for. We'll talk about a couple of different camera setups. This one is uh, one of the illuminators from John Miles. So he prefers the Nikon, but he will custom build the illuminator, which is this piece here for your camera. So I have a Canon. And he just had me send him measurements so that he could adapt this piece to my camera, which is brilliant. This, uh, this is the illuminator. It uses a 100 millimeter um, autofocus macro lens. So when we look at the whole setup, uh, you can buy the whole setup from John Miles, or you can purchase your camera locally. You can purchase your lens locally and just buy the illuminator from John Miles. I don't know what his prices are now, but you can certainly find out more about him from milesresearch.com. And if you want to drop my name, if you're going to purchase an illuminator, he has many to choose from. This is the one that I feel is most versatile. I'll tell you why in a minute. But if you drop my name, yes, full disclosure, I receive a commission and I truly appreciate that. What I love about this is it has a focus light. And it also has the left and right options for the light. So I can have just one, just the other, or both, which is brilliant because it allows me to get that frontal lighting and the side lighting. It allows me to really play with my lights to get the detail that I want to see in the image. All right. This is what it looks like when you're using the camera. Um, it does not come near your client's face. Now, who do I love this setup for? Not every camera setup is really useful for every client. I love this setup specifically for my very young clients and my elderly clients. Now, why is that? I love it because the young clients um, often, it, it's hard to get 
them to like if they're under the age of four or five to get them to totally understand what I'm looking for you know that they need to open their eyes really really wide and keep them wide and just stare straight ahead their little eyes dart all over the place and this way I can give them something something to focus on inside the camera I can tell them to just look at that little focus light stare at that focus light right there's room there that if we need to get them to use their fingers like this to prop their eye open we can do that same with elderly people who tend to have slightly droopy eyelids um we've got room to get their fingers in there to help them prop their eye open so we can get a really clear photo one of the challenges here is that we do get this is my window in my office we do get light artifacts and reflections from the window if we're not careful so we need to position the client properly to minimize those reflections right which means um and you experiment depending on you know the direction of the sun what time of day to figure out what works best in your space is this all making sense if this is making sense give me a one give me a one in the comments box and if you've got any questions about these as we're going please feel free to shoot them out at me i am watching the comments box both uh, well, on everything from Instagram to Facebook to the webinar. Um, I've got a nice crop from the Dynalite, and it's cool when taking a short video, but must be my Nikon does a better job for photos. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, this is my, um, the, and Erin says this is making sense. Fabulous. Thanks for that on Instagram. I really appreciate that. So this is the Iris Explorer 4. This is no longer made. He now has the Iris Explorer 5, which I also own. I just didn't update my slides here. This works on the Canon body. Again, it uses a 60 millimeter autofocus lens with two lens extenders. The lens extenders actually come with the illuminator itself with the Iris Explorer. Now, what I love about this one is that it's really compact. There's no little things that are you know, going to get broken up off the top of this. And actually, let me just grab this. Whoops. Let me grab this out of my drawer. And I'll show you what the new IE5 looks like as well. So this is the IE5. And it um, actually connects into the hot shoe on your camera, which is great. So for those of you on Instagram, this is the IE5 connects into your hot shoe on your camera. This one is much more um, adjustable for, for various things like the amount of lighting and whatnot. So it's really divine that way. Super compact. This actually does go right up against the face. So it looks like this when you're using it. What I love about this is it blocks out all the extraneous light. So I could be you know, if I was being a bit crazy and taking this with me on a hike in the mountains and I found someone up there whose eye pictures I wanted, I could pop this out, take their eye photos, and we would not see a mountain or a tree or the blue sky reflected in those eyes, which is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love that it gives, that it blocks out so much. Again, I like this for clients uh, between about the ages of 10 or 12 and about the ages of 55 people who can easily hold their eyes wide, wide open. I will sometimes get my client to hold their eye open and then get my camera in, in between there. So for those of you, you could see that maybe on Instagram. So that's good. You saw it in the little image up in the corner, right? And so um, I do, do love this setup tremendously. I love that it is a little more compact. Um, they both, both of the setups, both the John Miles and the IE5 from Matthew Dahmer, he's in France. Beautiful setups. I highly recommend both. Again, if you go to Iris Explorer, to Iris Labs, and want to get an IE5, uh, let me know because I'll send you a dedicated link to do that. And yes, I will earn commission. But Matthew takes very, very good care of the people I send him. And I don't know if it's because he knows that I'm watching, but he does take very good care of them. This is exactly why we want the left, right switchable. Okay, so for those of you on Instagram, here you go. So when we look at the top image right here, where we've got both lights on, this is called frontal lighting. Frontal lighting fills in all the little hills and valleys. It makes the eye look very, very flat. 
Now, when we look here, a little hard to see on, um, on Instagram, but can you see we've got some wrinkles showing up down here? These are contraction furrows. They're really hard to see in that image, but when we go to side lighting, we can see them. And when we flip the light to the other side, oh my goodness, look at them all. Look at how many we've got. This is why we want switchable lighting. We want to see if our client has things like contraction throws. It just makes certain features pop. So that left, right switchable is so, so important. All right, so here we go. Oh, I'll hold this closer for my Instagram friends again. Consistency is really important uh, when we are doing photos. We're never going to use photos for color comparison again, because even one camera on the same settings, I don't know what it is, can change how the colors look. And certainly if you're looking at those images on different computer screens or different tablet screens, you are going to see that the colors are extremely different. So when we look at a good photo, we can see the fiber, we can see where the pigment is sitting. And that's really important. If the camera light is very white and if the shutter speed is just right, we can assess color as well. But an LED light shoots slightly blue and incandescent light shoots slightly yellow. And those alter the colors that your camera will record. And that changes your interpretation of things, right? So we need to be very careful with this. If you are planning on using your smartphone for photos, and it's just perfectly fine to do that. Just remember, you can't use it for color comparison, nor can we use the images taken with even a good digital camera for color comparison, right? Be very aware of that. So here's an image taken um, on a 24 megapixel camera with an LED light. This was taken with the same camera. So this was with the IE4. This is with the IE5. The color shows slightly differently in these. And this is the IE5 at a shutter speed of 1 over 60 and the IE5 at a shutter speed of 1 over 125. And so again, it shows a little bit of difference in the skin tones, tiny bit of difference in the sclera color. You may not be able to see that clearly on the Instagram feed, but it is in there, that's for sure. And it's the kind of detail that is very fine, very small, and you just really need to super pay attention to it. I just uh, need to get back in here so I can watch my uh, Facebook people. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so continuing on, um, there we go. So before and after photos, again, are an inaccurate way of monitoring anything in iridology. We just simply do not do that. Smartphone photos are especially suspect. I have been, um, I've been attacked for saying that. People that send me photos that are clearly different cameras, different equipment, different lighting, different everything saying, this is the before, this is the after, look at the improvement. It's like, no, the technology changed, the eye didn't. If you can send me photos done with the same camera, the same settings, then we might be able to have a different conversation, but I'm not gonna guarantee it. Here again, same eye. This was taken with a print film camera, a professional print film camera. This was taken with an eight, oh, sorry, this was, this was not print film. This was an eight megapixel digital. This is the same eye taken with a 24 megapixel digital. Notice the difference in the detail. So yes, resolution makes a difference, huge difference. In the lower resolution, this area simply looked rarefied. In the higher resolution, we can see that this is black pigment. Here again, this is a print film camera. So this is the same person. Take This image was taken about two, the year 2000. This was taken with my 
IE4. This was one of my first attempts to take a picture with my smartphone. Did not work very well. Smartphone images are harder to do. You're going to have to practice it. You're gonna to have to work at it. Be prepared if you're asking your clients to take their own photos to send to you, warn them that it can take up to a hundred shots to get two or three usable ones, okay? They just need to know so they don't get super frustrated. Gaetano, you are so welcome. I'm so glad you are with me. All right, so having said that, uh, with your permission, I would like to spend just a couple of minutes introducing the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System program. It is the only live, online, fully mentored course for nutritionists, herbalists, and naturopaths who want to streamline their clinical work without sa sacrificing client care. I find that too many practitioners see the client, gather the data, then the practitioner goes and spends two to three or four or five or six hours creating a protocol, brings that back to the client in a future appointment, but the practitioner is not really being paid for those extra hours in program development. When I'm teaching iridology to holistic professionals, what I am teaching them is how to use it to create programs in session with their clients programs that their client can actually stick with. If it took you four or even two hours to create a program, your client will not be able to stick to it easily. Just saying. So really important that we learn how to use this well so that you don't have to donate time and so that you can create programs that your clients can actually stick with. So important. The next start date for the course is September 9th. And we will be doing an info webinar coming up at the end of this month. If you would like to be invited to that info webinar, and this first info webinar is going to be by, by invitation only. After that, the info webinars will be open to everybody. Um, and I am doing by invitation only because there are only 10 seats in the class. And uh, the by invitation only group are people who've expressed an interest in serious interest in learning more about the course to see if it will be a good fit for them. And so if you would like to be invited to the webinar, PM your email address to me or send me your email address somehow so that I can make sure you get invited so that you can join us. That webinar will be Wednesday, June 30th at 12 noon Mountain Daylight Time. For those of you who are located in Europe, that next course is going to be a daytime course. Mm, I'm trying to remember. I think we're starting it at like noon or 1 p.m. So it'll be a good time for you if you're in Europe. I have one student in Europe right now who the class for her is at 1 a.m. She gets up at 1 a.m. every Wednesday, every Thursday morning rather, to come to class for two hours, which is just, I'm so impressed with her dedication. So I'm watching to see, are there any questions about iridology equipment, about whether you can actually practice as an iridology without having a gorgeous setup at the outset? Ultimately, you want to end up with something like this. You truly do. Um, any questions about uh, the upcoming course or anything that I can help you with in the next couple of minutes here. I'll give it just another moment or two. It's been so fun having you with me. Thank you for spending this last 40 minutes or so with me. I am looking forward to hopefully seeing you at another webinar and maybe even in the course. That would be great. Carolyn says, thank you. You are most welcome. Glad to have you with us today. All righty. It's looking like that's it, that's all. So I think we are probably about done. Maria says, thank you. And again, you are welcome also. That's it for today. I look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. Bye for now.